the program because they were a doormat for years. Um, and he actually got a pretty, they're saying they gave him a pretty good uh, contract extension. So good for him. But yeah, Will Greer was one. He decided to skip on his bowl game. I totally agree. He's one of the top QBs in the draft class. Why risk, why risk it getting hurt? You have nothing to gain from playing in this game. David Seals, he kind of has to play in this game. Just cuz. Um, but Will Greer has nothing to gain from this. Like, yeah, they'll probably be like, well, you tested positive for steroids in Florida and got kicked out. But then he already explained himself. So, there's that. Um, I just... I'm actually happy that athletes are taking more initiative and saying, nah, we're not going to show up. I'm going to give you a list of a couple more guys who decided they are not playing in their bowl game. Uh, We have West Virginia offensive tackle Yadni Kajust. Yeah, if my left tackle is not playing in the bowl game, neither am I. Uh, You have Michigan lineman Rashawn Gary. He's not playing in his bowl game. In Florida, North Carolina wide receiver Kelvin Harmon, he's not playing. Arizona State wide receiver Nikhil Harry, he's not playing. Oklahoma State running back Justice Hill, he's not playing. Houston defensive lineman Ed Oliver, he's not playing. North Carolina State linebacker Jermaine Pratt, he's not playing. South Carolina wide receiver Debo Samuel, he's not playing. LSU cornerback Greedy Williams. Wait, did you say white receiver or wide receiver? I'm sorry. Wide receiver. <laughs> you think a, a wide receiver named Debo Samuel? I don't know. Him? That's why I was like, wait, what? Did I hear that right? <laughs> Name a white dude named Debo. I wait. <laughs> but nah, South Carolina wide receiver Debo Samuel, LSU cornerback Greedy Williams, redshirt sophomore. Yeah. Oh, and also, Iowa tied in Noah Fant. Is there a better receiver name than Greedy Williams? That's a cornerback. Oh, I thought you said receiver. No, he's a corner. Also, um, Michigan starting offensive tackle Donnell Green went on Instagram and said he signed with an agent and he's not going to play in the Gophers Bowl game. Uh, I also know Caleb Wilson tied in for UCLA, chose to forego. Um, he they're not playing a bowl game because they're trash, but he chose to forgo his senior season. Talking to the mic, bro. I'm talking into the mic. What are you talking about? You see how those bars are barely moving when you talk? They're, oh, they're moving. No, right here. See that? I'm looking at the bar on the screen. It's moving. All right. Asshole. But anyway, uh, uh, Minnesota linebacker. His first name, Blake Cashman. He's the second Minnesota player to skip a ball game. He had a hundred. He led the Gophers with 104 tackles, tied for the team lead in tackles for loss of 15, and a second on the team with two and a half sacks, and those five pra- pass breakups. That's third on the team. And he's just a one of a bunch of guys who are skipping their ball game, and. With all this talk about the college football playoff, how the power the power five conferences, pretty much the conferences that aren't the Pac-12, the ACC, uh, the Big 12, the SEC, yeah, it, the, the pretty much like the American Athletic Conference, Sun Belt, uh, Mountain West, and I'm forgetting. I was going to say the Big East, but they don't exist anymore. There's a, there's a fourth conference. I can't remember. Maybe the Independence. I don't know. Yeah, the Independence, because they're technically a conference um, somehow. But, like, those four schools would have a playoff to play each other, and then that team would make it to the playoff. But, essentially, they're talking about having the 18 playoff, and I'm like, but it would be like a home game for the team. And here's my issue. One... A lot of those kids are going to be missing their finals because of that. Uh, And two, you're not paying them. So, you know what? It's going to keep happening. Like, eventually, the best players aren't going to play. People aren't going to want to watch these games because they're going to be like, well, so-and-so wasn't playing. So, we're going to give them a better ranking. And the fact that the SEC 
had a bunch of teams with four losses highly ranked as bullshit. Mississippi State should be nowhere near the top 25. Texas A&M, I'll give them that. They should be ranked because, hell, I mean, you go to a six-overtime game and score 77 points against LSU, I'm going to say you, you should be ranked. And they're going, I think, uh, UCF, which is undefeated, without their starting quarterback, they're playing LSU without Greedy Williams, but that's still a tough LSU team. It's going to be an entertaining game, but when it comes down to it, a lot of these athletes are just like, why should I risk my health? And I agree with them. Until they're going to get paid, it's okay if you don't play. The coach needs you to play because the coach needs to win to keep his job. But if he did good enough recruiting, he'd have somebody ready to play behind you. So it is what it is. All right, man. Are you ready to get to the rants? Uh, let me see. I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about. Cause I got some shit to say. Okay. Some shit dropped while we were, while we've been on the air. Okay, I, okay. I'm gonna just speed through these three things. DJ Durkin is back as a coach. You want to guess where? Alabama. Yeah. Only because I saw you run down. Of course you did. He's a consultant at Alabama. How you feel about that? Um, I think you've made it pretty clear. Fuck DJ Durkin. I'm pretty sure you said that on the air. And everyone who loves him? Yeah. And his mother? Cool. Um, Butch Jones might be going to Maryland. Alabama is just like a, a, a broken coach's, like... Yeah. It's like a dead coach's kennel. No, uh, what did... It's Dead Poet Society for No, coaches. no, no. What did John Gruden call his office in... Uh, in fired, Tampa, ESPN, yeah, fired yeah. football coaches of America. Yeah, that's now in Alabama. They've now relocated. To Tuscaloosa, yeah. Louisville's head coach, uh, and uh, well, he was the uh, head coach at Appalachian State, which they've been really great since they came to D1 from D2 and was winning all those national titles. There, Holy D2. fuck. Hurry up. I got some shit to Appalachian, get to. Appalachian State. There's some shit going Went down on Twitter right now. And won, the South, and won the South, uh, the Sun Belt. And their head coach, when he, as soon as he got to Louisville, he decided to pull scholarships from some of the athletes that they were offering. And I think that's a dick move, but, you know, that he wants to put a stamp on the program. And it's ironic because... Um, USC took Boise State's defensive line coach. He's their defensive line coach. Cliff Kingsbury hired um, Bowling Green's former head coach, who was his running back coach at the time at Texas Tech when DeAndre Washington was there. So that'll be an interesting wrinkle to USC's offense. Uh, they still have like two more. They might the sa- the Ram safety coach might become um, USC's defensive back coach possibly. Also, uh. D- uh, Butch Jones, Louisville. Yeah, that's about it. Pretty much, a couple coaches got fired, hired, and shit. Odell quad injury. Yeah, Malik Jackson, and oh, Ed Hockley for a referee. Uh, he said on numerous occasions he thought uh, players died on the field. So if you look at our rundown, you'll see that the link is there. So I'm gonna just let Pete take it away. All right, first of all, there's a lot of shit I got to get to in the rap Twitter sphere. Up uh, first, Vic Mensa. Fuck Vic Mensa, first of all. He Bruh. dropped an album today. And actually, I like Vic Mensa's music. I actually advocated for his last album, put it in my top albums of 2017. But you know what? Fuck this new album. I ain't listening to it. Obviously, I like XXXNation, and I took his side when Vic, try to sneak diss him after he was already dead and receiving an award at the BET Awards. But besides all that, this yeah. motherfucker gonna make an album art with him shirtless showing off his tattoos with his eyes all twisted and cross-eyed trying to clout chase X. Are you fucking kidding me? And he titled it Hooligans? Bro, stop. Yeah. Vic Mensa, you need to make up your mind, bro. You came up being wild and free and then you were like woke and like hotep and now i don't know what the fuck you're doing dog get the fuck out of here vic mensa nobody nobody cares about your music bro can you even sell out the nova right now 
Xerxes well, looking ass bitch. Could you even open up for Lupe Fiasco right now? <laughs> oh, that. And speaking of Chicago rap, that's just the tip of the motherfucking iceberg. Because guess what? Somebody took the meds out of Kanye's medicine cabinet. Because dude is going full blast in the Drake Caleb Blacklist beef. Yeah, that's right, man. If you haven't checked Ye's Twitter, check it now if you're listening live. If you're listening to the podcast, I don't know. I'm sure dude is probably going to wake up tomorrow and delete the 50 to 100 tweets. He's literally just been going off on Drake. He's even gone off on Travis. He's gone off on everyone. Basically saying Drake pretty much called him, asking him to clear a song for the 10th anniversary of So Far Gone. First of all, Drake didn't even call him, so Ye was mad about that, saying that they're brothers and how you ain't going to call me and talk to me about this shit, man to man. And then from there, Kanye turned it down, and I guess Drake got mad. Kanye's alleging that Drake threatened him, threatened his family, threatened his... And pretty much saying that Drake knows Ye has is bipolar and has mental health issues and saying those type of things and doing this whole Twitter beef, this whole buying the first rows of Pusha T show and doing the fighting shit and accusing Kanye of selling him out when he didn't. All this shit is really just triggering Kanye's mental illness, fucking with his whole family's life. And him and Travis now got beef when they're supposed to be brothers and in the same family. And he even said he likes sicko mode, even though it's a sneak diss on him, which he said is fucked up because, you know, Travis is like his little bro. And so when he put on, he let Drake put that verse in there. And yeah, there's just a bunch of shit. Kanye saying Drake saying he's the reason Drake exists, saying he paved way for all the weirdos. Saying he brought in the the double polo, he's just a polo dude with the black with the backpack, and without him there'd be no Drake. Bruh. All types of shit. Pretty much saying that if he died, all artists would make a memorial disc for him. Yeah. Saying he needs to get the love that they never showed Michael Jackson while he was on this earth. Bruh. And yeah. It just keeps going. Like he, I think he's still tweeting. He's saying we should all be working together. We should all be positive. All this other shit. Clearly looking like a mad bipolar dude. And honestly, man, I really feel bad for Ye because he got to get his shit together. But this shit is mad funny. And he's right. He's honestly right. He, yeah, he's he's right. He did pave ways for ASAP and all them to break into fashion. He paved ways for Drake to be emotional and weird. He paved ways for Cuddy and Travis, which pretty much birthed this whole new generation of SoundCloud rap. So, yeah, Ye did a lot of shit. But, yeah, we already know that. And you want to talk about Fuck Clout? Bro, you were on X's last album, which was really some... Let me get to that. So, yeah, man, XXXTenision dropped an album last week. Post, post, um, life, post boredom. Postmortem, yeah, and pretty much it was some. It was ten tracks, some industry, some full on industry bullshit. And if you listen to that album and you're an actual X fan, I think yeah, you're happy just to hear his voice and get some music. But at the same time, you know you can feel that it's not the same artist because half the songs in there is just some unfinished shit where he was fucking around. But some industry heads. And probably, realistically, the family, since he just had a baby, probably needed some money. So I ain't even mad at them for that. But yeah, some industry bullshit where they just looped together all his songs. Got Kanye to get on a song, which was actually pretty tight. But honestly, I don't know if X would have ever worked with Kanye. I don't know if X would have worked with like the Ray Shermer track that he did. I don't even know if he did that little peep track or that little pump track that they came out. But yeah, man, clout chasing is real. Clout chasing is an academic, epidemic. And here Kanye West is talking about all this clout shit's gotta get has gotten out of hand and fuck clout and all this shit. But bro, you literally took XXX Tenacion's Twitter and Instagram avatar, which was a world. Like he was the first one to do that. 
and now all the rappers are doing that shit. Like, fuck out of here, Kanye. You are a clout chaser yourself, and this is a product of the environment that you live. And you're talking about you being so influential, which is true, which is 